Senator Paul. Ms. Powers, on uh, April 26, 2023, you testified before this committee that USAID did not fund gain-of-function research. I'd like to give you a chance to um, correct the record. Is it still your position that USAID did not fund gain-of-function research? Um, we have no evidence that USAID has funded gain-of-function research, and we certainly haven't authorized gain-of-function okay. research. Well, I'll help you. Behind me, we'll list a paper from 2015. This is a paper produced by the Wuhan Institute of Virology and also by Dr. Barrick from UNC. In this paper, if you'll see the funding aspect that's highlighted, it says USAID EPT predict funding from EcoHealth Alliance. So this paper was one where they took a virus, uh, the SARS virus, the backbone of the SARS virus, and then took an S protein from an unknown virus they found in the wild and put them together. Um, are you aware that these experiments in the study were supported by USAID, PREDICT, and GRANT through EcoHealth Alliance? Um, as I said, USAID uh, has not authorized gain-of-function research. This is the first time seeing this. We'll All right. happy well, this to look into it. This has been around since 2015. Review. We've been over it numerous times. It's been in the public record. We've repeatedly said that, yes, USAID did fund gain-of-function research. Here's the evidence. But here's some comments from some different people about this study, because some will try to argue this still is not gain-of-function. Simon Wayne Hobson is a virologist at the Pasteur Institute in Paris. He points out that the researchers have created with this research, funded by USAID, a novel virus that grows remarkably well in human cells. If the virus escaped, nobody could predict the trajectory. Richard Ebright from Rutgers says, the only impact of this work is the creation in a lab of a new non-natural risk to humanity. So is your position that this study was not gain-of-function or that you didn't fund it? Which is your position? We have had an awful lot of back and forth and provided uh, thousands of pages of, of documents on this. Uh, this article, I can't, it looks like it's from 2015. Right. So uh, we will have to look into the specific claims. But again, to put on the record, it's a big USAID point. has not but actually, and will not that is your authorize position? gain of function. I know that's your position, but the record will show that you did. Well, and this was before your time. I don't know why we can't just admit it. It did happen. And the reason this is important is many people want to collect all these viruses from around the world, but they don't want to just collect the viruses to sort of have them and have a library of viruses. They take the virus, and then they take an S protein from another virus, and they create a virus that doesn't exist in nature that often has ramifications that could be quite different or quite uh, serious. I'll give you the words of the authors of this paper. On the basis of these findings, scientific review panels may deem similar studies building chimeric viruses based on circulating strains too risky to pursue. So this was funded by USAID. It was funded through the PREDICT program. There's no question of that. And even the authors admit that it was gain of function. So we have to get beyond sort of quibbling over whether it was because we have to make sure in the future we're not doing this and that we don't fund this going forward. Now, the PREDICT program was going to be surpassed by another program going after viruses, and that has been suspended. That is all good. But we have to admit the past, be truthful about the past in order to go forward because Millions of people died from COVID-19. The FBI has concluded it came from a lab in Wuhan. The Department of Energy has concluded that. Even the CIA initially, their scientific board, voted six to one until they were overturned by higher-ups at the CIA to say otherwise. They voted to say that this thing came from the lab as well. It only comes from the lab if we're, if, if, if we're in favor of creating these things. We can't control everything China does, but we certainly shouldn't be funding it. So we have to be honest that this was funded. Now, there was a warning sign to us that this was going on. There was something called the Diffuse Project in 2018 that was presented to DARPA, once again by Barrick and by uh, Dr. Xi in Wuhan. That's okay. The Diffuse Project was to create a coronavirus with a furin cleavage site, which doesn't exist in nature but makes it incredibly more infectious in humans. There was a briefing to 15 agencies. One of the agencies was USAID. There was a briefing about this Diffuse Project. But nobody from USID and nobody from all 15 agencies ever told anyone about this project. It was hidden for years and years and only revealed by a brave Lieutenant Colonel Marine working at DARPA who exposed this when everybody else had hidden this. And my question is, 
USAID was in this briefing about a research project that had incredible danger to our country and finally wasn't funded. Will you provide the names of the people from USAID who were in this meeting so they can be interviewed so we can find out why didn't they tell anyone or did they tell their superiors and nobody and people ignored them? Why was the public never made aware that they were trying to do dangerous research to create a virus very similar to what COVID-19 became? And how could 15 agencies show up for a briefing and no one expose it to the public and we only hear about it by a whistleblower? Will you provide for us the name of the person at the USAID who attended this briefing in 2018 and let us interview them to find out what happened? Why, why was this never revealed to the public? So uh, I think within the 10,000 pages of documents you have from USAID uh, are whatever documents we have on this DARPA uh, proposers meeting. Um, I received the letter, we received the letter from your staff yesterday. Uh, we'll certainly look at the request. Um, but just to give a little context, uh, U.S. government agencies often, on good days, show up for one another, go to each other's meetings. This is not something that USAID ever considered funding or was ever engaged on in some substantive way. But so. the, the point is, is that after hearing that somebody wanted to put a furin cleavage site in the virus, alarm bells go off. And then when you see the virus in 2020 and you say, oh my goodness, they did what they were asking, someone should have said, wow, I was in that hearing and I didn't think anything of it at the time, but now I'm like, maybe I should tell somebody, maybe I should call up the president, maybe I should call up Anthony Fauci, maybe somebody should be informed that we learned about this and I didn't think anything of it at the time. You're right, it could have been inconsequential in 2018. In 2020, it becomes profoundly important. Why didn't anybody from government come forward and warn us that this could be a virus not from nature, which is not very infectious usually, and was incredibly infectious because it had been pre-adapted in a lab for human transmission? Look, um, I just want to come back to your earlier point. All of this ended at USAID in 2020. It is before my time. We don't feel defensive about these engagements. We've appreciated That's all we're asking into... for is the, the, we'd like to interview the person who was at that meeting. 